what was it like? Um, you said, okay, now we're going to do a segment, or someone suggested we do a segment on the Budweiser car, on yeah. Junior's car, and you said, okay, that's a cool car. Right. Current cup car. And then Steve or Senior said, introduced you to Junior and said, here, you do the segment with him? Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. So Steve Crisp kind of was... Uh, you know, looked after Junior, especially in the early days. Right. And that and just uh, made sure that he was new to Cup and new to, to the... Uh, to all the, the media deal. stuff. All the media stuff just made sure that, you know, he was coming across the way he should. Right. Yep. Okay. So he, yeah, he was going to tell you about his Cup car. Yeah. Transmission is a T10. So it's uh, it's all standard stuff that, that that's been in Chevrolets and Fords over the past 50 years. It's all just been beefed up for the 500 miles we run. And what's one of these things weigh? About 3,400 pounds without the driver. 3,700 pounds with Tom stuffed in the trunk. Now these Monte Carlos, they're pretty slick. They're a real aerodynamic. Tell us about it. We spent a lot of time in the wind tunnel trying to tweak each corner of the car to get the air to go around the car the fastest. Also trying to get air on the spoiler and the nose of the car to get the most downforce. Now, I've seen you tear the whole side off one of these cars. How's that affect it? Well, one time at Daytona, <laughs> we had a seat post collapse, and that cost four tenths of laps. So that's how big Arrow is. What's the single most important thing to make these things fly? Well, I think the most important thing is whose name you got on the roof. Good answer. I'm not ready to have my name on the roof, but what do I got to do to jump in this car? Hmm. Well, I do need a trunk rubber in my 69 Camaro. Done. All right. If you're going to do this, though, you got to be cool. Stay on the compound because we don't want to get in any trouble. Anything I need to know? Well, it's just like a stock Monte Carlo. They do call them stock cars, dude. There's some of Junior's guys doing a pit stop. So they, you got to drive his, like a show car or something? Yeah, it, was, it was, wasn't the full-on race car, obviously, that they're going to race that weekend. Yep. But it was one of their show cars, and they had, I don't know, like a 500-horsepower motor in it or whatever. But it still had... Uh, or a Jericho or whatever they run on T101s or whatever it was back then. Transmission, yeah. Yeah, and uh, uh, we'd like to have fun with it. And this was when Steve Crisp was a really funny guy. And we all talked about, you know, how to make it more interesting than just driving around the parking lot. Right. And that's when Crisp came up with the idea. He says, well, let's pretend you go off the... And we did. We went across the road and that. Right, because Junior said, stay on the compound. Right, stay on the compound. He says, let's pretend you, you know, you abandon that idea and just go on the road. And the cops are going to pull you over. And, of course, all the cops in Mooresville, you know, knew Earnhardt's. Of course, yeah. So, so Steve calls him up and says, hey, we need you for a few minutes to do a little segment. And then we just kind of came up with this idea to do this segment. And it just morphed into, you know, driving the car and getting arrested and the whole bit. Right. Because yeah. they're practicing. Well, we'll play it here. That's yeah. good. You know what? I think they're going to hang a Yui and try and get some new skins for this. Did these guys know? Oh, yeah. yeah okay. I guess, yeah. Junior says you can put a fresh set of Goodyear's on this. I think we're going to put you in a trunk with Tom. We're trying to practice here. You need to keep moving. <laughs> You know, the interior of these are pretty plain. All you get is a steering wheel, a seat, a shifter, and a couple of gauges. Where's the air conditioning? Power windows. You got a clutch on it. You don't pop it and spin the wheels. You're just going to stall the thing. And look at this. You drive up to a stop sign. There's not even a turn signal on this thing. I think I'm going to get in trouble on the road with this thing. You know what's great about these cars? They've got a little club that gets together every Sunday afternoon and they actually rent the track and go around the track. And you know what? They're getting 80 to 120,000 people watching them every Sunday. Can you imagine that? You came up with those lines. That's pretty good. <laughs> you know, there's a little club they have every weekend. <laughs> Everyone takes these cars we're, out. We were taking it as, as we weren't into stock car racing. Right. You know, so we're just, the whole thing was just a goof. Yeah. yeah. I think these cars are really good to go up and value with that sort of enthusiasm for them when they're brand new. What are they going to be like when they're 20 years old? Well, I'm going to take this 
Oh, he's chased. got their dash cam footage. Oh yeah, we had the dash cam on. These guys were awesome. Good afternoon, sir. How you doing? Uh, good, how about you? Fine. Do you know why I stopped you? I figured you heard we were sponsored by Country Style Donuts. Thought maybe we had some in the trunk. No, sir. The reason I stopped you is because in North Carolina, when you drive a race car on the roads, you must first have a safety net up. You must be wearing a helmet. And third of all, I don't see your spotter anywhere around. Have you got your driver license registration in hand? No, sir, I don't. Okay, if you would, how about step out of the vehicle for me? All right. Oh. I don't know how they call these things stock cars. They don't even have doors. Sir, if you would, just put your hands on the hood right here, please. You know what? <laughs> it's a good <laughs> shot. For a race car, I can't believe how nice the paint is on this thing. Sir, this is what happens when you pass the pace car. Hey, you're Dennis Gage. I'm not Dennis Gage. I'm Peter Clute from Dream Car Garage. You're not Peter from Dream Car Garage. I watched that show. Watch your head, Mr. Gates. <laughs> <laughs> what, sh what show was Dennis so Gage? Dennis Gage is the guy with the mustache. Right. He's been was it My he, Classic Car? My Classic Car. Yeah. So he'd been, he was the big guy at the time, and we were in season two. So right. we were kind of the new guys on the block mm. on speed, or speed vision at the time. Yep. So we just had fun with the whole thing. And the guys, the cops were awesome. Oh, they're great. Yeah. Steve was great. Earnhardt's were like awesome. They let us do kind of. Just goofing around goofing at the race shop. At the race shop. And that's why we all just were pretty relaxed about it. And I think that first, um, first day that we were there, I think we were there for three days. Mm. The first day just broke the ice. And, uh, that one segment where after Tom gets um, senior to do that one segment with the 57 Chevy mm -hmm. and just out of the blue, he says to Earnhardt, now that I got you on tape, you can kiss my ass. Well, he can kiss my ass now because I got it on tape. <laughs> <laughs> I think Earnhardt just thought, wow, these are normal guys. Like they don't, they don't they, care. They don't care. Yeah. <laughs> Because I'm sure he would have been, like, the majority of his interactions at that point, people would have been tiptoeing around. He's the intimidator, kissing his ass, and, yep. you know, Tom's telling him to, to, to <laughs> kiss, kiss his, his ass. ass. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then uh, Earnhardt called him Nacho instead of Nacho. Right. Says, Nacho, you're okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's good. You know, for a new car, the thing really gets up and goes. Some of the interior options, well, that leaves a little bit to desire. But to replace this car, I mean, to rebuild it from scratch, it's going to cost you at least $200,000. Well, yeah, that's a wrap still on another episode of that Dream time. Car Garage. Oh, yeah, for sure. Well, I want to tell you how warm and rich the North Carolina hospitality has been since we've been here.